We have a visitor from Maniago by way of Utah on its way to the UK that is indefinitely stranded in Indiana. <laughs> yeah, we're going to take a look at the Technocut Viper knives. Jesper Voxnes designed Odino from Maniago, Italy. Interesting little knife. Has me a bit conflicted. Stick around. We'll talk about it. Hi gang, Rob here. It is the evening of 4 February 2015. Been G-mini frost about a week since I've made a video. I had a little tripod issue. <laughs> had to buy a new one. Um, this knife is very interesting. And it is, as I said, the Viper Knives Odino. A production version of a Jesper Voxness Custom. Which is kind of interesting, I think, because uh, Viper and Vox are not the first marriage for production of his knives. Um, hmm. We'll talk about that too as we go along. Here's the box. We'll take a quick look at it. You know, it's got Italian on it. <laughs> they got lots of names, don't they? Viper, Technicut, Maniago. We're not quite sure how all that works. Well, maybe we should go visit. You got Fox Cutlery, Lion Steel, Technicut Viper, all with the Maniago quality seal. We're not quite sure if they're all the same factory or what's going on. They have a lot of things in common, I've noticed after working on lots of them. So you get this box, kind of a, uh, you know, a little nicer than an Ontario box. Plastic sleeve, the knife comes in. Pretty lame little uh, piece of blue masking tape. Oh yeah, that's a. <laughs> there's something in there that I'll talk about later. Um, anyway, yeah, two languages. Not much going on. Yeah. But that's not why we buy these for the box and the paperwork, is it? Heck no. Okay, I'm going to try something new. I'm going to do the everything you need to know part of this video. Let's see, where are we at? Um, a little under three minutes. Before five minutes go by, you're going to know whether you should buy this knife if you value my opinion about it. <clears throat> We have a knife overall length of seven and a quarter inches with a two and seven eighths inches long blade and a four and three eighths inches long handle. Blade Bowler N690 European better version of VG10. We got six AL4V titanium handle scales. This knife also comes in carbon fiber and G10 offside scales with still a titanium frame. It is a titanium frame lock with that sort of European lock interface location that I kind of like if it's done right. We got a titanium backspacer. We got a clip that's stainless steel, but it's it sort of looks titanium. Very good clip, by the way. Blade steel is about 150 thousandths thick. The uh, titanium frame scales are about 160 thousandths thick, given the knife with some gaps between the blade and scales, about a half inch thickness. Uh, what does it weigh? How about 5.6 ounces? Yeah. <laughs> a sub three inch EDC blade, over five and a half ounces. Uh, but this will shock you because of its awesome belly and extremely thin dimension behind the blade. Even though it's an over five and a half ounce sub three inch bladed EDC knife, I like it and I kind of like it a lot. Um, 
it's well made with uh, a couple asterisks that we'll get to during the video. Uh, they kind of bother me. They might not bother you. You're going to have to stick around to find out if you want to know what that's all about. Uh, overall build quality, extremely good. Ergonomics for a small knife, extremely good. Lockup is rock solid. Action is plenty. Ball bearing knife, of course. So yeah, if you're into this stuff, if you thought the Spyderco Techno was a little short and stubby and didn't quite fit your hand and you want something just a little longer, here it is, guys. My recommendation, 7.5 out of 10. Definitely a buy if you're just going to use it lightly and flip it a lot and not plan on taking it apart and doing any maintenance or mods. Okay, those of you who like five minute videos and just want to know, should I buy it? You got what you needed. So now we're going to stick around with you guys who really want to go deep with this thing. Okay, let's go blade first. We have a pretty lion steel like blade shape. Yes, it is designed by Jesper Voxness, the originator of $200 snail bottle opener things. But he makes some pretty cool knives, so we'll forgive him the $200 snail bottle opener things. <laughs> this knife, uh, I recognize sort of right away as coming from his mind's eye. A lot of us uh, saw a Boker version of a Vox knife come out what, a year or two ago and it was sort of fraught with some nasty quality problems. I don't think the blades were ground very, ground very well. The steel quality one is good. Uh, I think this is a much better production representation of Vox knives. Um, now moving on to the blade. Yes, it is Jesper Vox Ness designed. But very lion steel, don't you think? It's sort of a stubby SR1 blade. It's got that same almost 90 degree change in the edge attitude from tip to hilt. And we have not distal taper, just like the SRs, we've got a thickness that stays the same until the the belly starts and then the knife just makes this gentle curve down to the tip. See if the light will let you guys see that. See what I'm talking about. It's very hard to capture I think. But what, what it does, the geometry of the way that blades ground, if you could just pinch it and run your fingers down you'd really know what I was talking about. But it stays the same thickness to about here and then it starts running in a curve to the tip. But what that gives you is when you sharpen this on a consistent angle sharpener like the Edge Pro that I did, it gives you extremely consistent thickness behind the edge and extremely consistent uh, width of your edge bevel, which I love. The difference between this blade and the Lion Steel SRs is that this one's actually thin behind the edge. Um, pretty wicked little slicer. Um, because it's so thin and because of an issue we'll get to in a second, I ground this edge um, a little differently than I usually do. This is, guys, uh, just 18 degrees per side all the way to the edge with just a deburring pass um, at about a half a degree elevation from there with my 2000 grit paper. So it's kind of a single bevel, non-micro bevel edge grind and just take a look at how it slices. Give a listen to how it slices. Look how broad it is. Let's see if it can do an S-curve. Almost. That's tough for a fat knife like this. There you go. Ooh. Knife is really sharp. Um, it, I own it. <laughs> You're going to see a disassembly portion of this video a little bit later. And it was 
and reassembling it off camera that it push cut the pad of my ring finger. <laughs> Uh, no slicing action whatsoever. It just uh, You guys don't think polished edges can slice tomatoes? Um, my finger proves you wrong. <clears throat> okay, so great slicer, great belly. Um, interesting w the way that, uh, that Viper executed the Ricasso. We don't have like, like a 90 degree plunge grind like a Spyderco. It's about a 45 and uh, it's not perfectly symmetrical, but it's not bad. And then this Ricasso, it's not really a forward choil, although it does give you room to do that. It, it terminates in an area where if they got it perfectly right, <clears throat> you'd have just enough beard hanging down to sharpen the knife a few times. But the way this one came, that was not the case. Um, if you come in close here, you can see that I have enhanced that Ricasso just a little bit. And guys, if you're gonna do that uh, to make it sharpenable so you get that nice pretty straight edge all the way to back, um, you better be careful because watch this area of the blade as I close the knife. You watching? Yeah, look where that closed stop pin hits. You really got to be careful. Um, if you take too much material, you're going to have a knife that uh, the detent hole drops past the ball and it might start hitting backspacer. And <clears throat> I had to be very careful. Yeah, I think it looks pretty factory unless you unless you know I did it and you're looking in exactly the right spot. Um, so you know, a little bit of a challenge there, but no hill for a climber, as they say. We have a, uh, if you guys are familiar with the Nut and Fancy Lion Steel SR1As, you know, that the SRs have a crown spine, and then he made the SR into a clip point. This one's sort of a minor clip, which I like. And they did the same thing here. The spine is crowned in this, uh, in this area, and then where they did the clip, it's just flat, 90 degrees from the uh, profile of the blade. The primary bevel grind of the knife is flat ground with that sort of odd curved distal taper thing going on up here. Great idea. But just a nice blade. Uh, the balance of this knife is right in the finger groove. So the weight that you perceive when you're using the knife is much lighter than the 5.6 ounces that it weighs. It just It is light and fast in hand just really is. Um, and if you guys saw the One Else Pub's video of this knife, he and I both had the same concern. Um, there are knives like the Curtis F3, the Benchmade Contego, others that you know have a finger groove at the front of the handle that, well, is it a one finger groove, a one and a half finger groove, or is the handle just designed to leave a point that digs into the meat of your middle finger. Um, and when you look at this knife, when you don't realize it's as small as it is, it looks like this finger groove might leave your middle finger hanging out on that point. Not the case. Um, if you're in a saber grip back, this is where the knife wants to be. The index finger kind of takes up most of that groove. The pinky is sort of hanging out right on that corner. But I would call it a four-finger knife. Um, it gives the, the blade a pretty aggressive angle of attack with belly down. I mean, it's a great knife to use for slicing vegetables on a cutting board. Unbelievable. And the N690 steel is very, very at home doing a task like that. There's one of my complaints about the knife. You guys are used to flicking spider coes open. This knife's going to take a little muscle memory to learn. It's actually much easier for me to middle finger flick than it is to use my thumb in the spider hole or the, <laughs> the strider hole or whatever you want to call that. Uh, anyway, you can, as I said, come forward on the knife. And what doesn't look like a forward finger choil actually works really well as one. And in the, in the hammer grip, um, you get a little intrusion from the 
front of the finger groove, but not bad. Can you come forward on it like that? Ooh, even more comfortable like that. The draw cut grip, very good. And again, the, the blade is aggressively um, canted into the work, so it's not going to be slipping off the belly. Not that you're ever going to use this knife in a knife fight, but if you had to, in the reverse grip, um, the way that your hand sort of wants to be on it, ooh, look at that, I gouged my leather. Um, anyway, it gives you quite a bit of a of reach for a sub three inch knife. And yeah, sure does, and it's very comfortable in that grip. Let's kind of look at the machining here. Got a nice wide chamfer all the way around the knife. See anything interesting there, guys? Hmm. Yeah. Huh. What's that? Hmm. We'll talk about that in a little while. Very cool backspacer. I uh, don't know if that jimping has really ever felt. Uh, maybe, maybe with the pinky in the draw cut grip. Mostly a cosmetic thing, I think, is that backspacer. Doesn't create a hot spot. Gives you a pretty cool little lanyard slot, and it's awfully good looking, I think. The inside edges of the titanium handle are broken nicely. Big improvement over the other Italian visitor we've had recently the CRKT Hijinx inside edges of that knife very sharp and because it's a flipper well they they kind of get your index finger at least on the one I've got um, so better finished knife than that let's talk about this clip a minute it is a nice fold over deepish carry clip one screw and a tooth that goes down into a slot you can see it is left or right hand carryable. That's a great shot of that clip attachment method. Uh, and it works. Very little lateral movement. The gap at the front of the clip is just about perfect. Adequate retention, easy to get in pocket and out with one hand. Great carry knife. I mean, you know, it disappears to there. And for me, as a left-hander, it works quite well when I slide my hand in my pocket. My th skin of my thumb catches that external lock bar cutout. Sort of three passes with the ball end mill. Very cool. But easy to extract from the pocket. Love it. And there it goes again. Just can't quite get that. To, can't, it does have a little bit of a weak, weakish detent. So you got to build a little thumb tension. Not as bad as the uh, Benchmade 761. It's not quite enough to snap the blade out, but uh, I get, I'll get used to it. How's that blade centering look? Pretty much on the money. If anything, it favors the lock bar side a little, which means um, as the knife breaks in, it should Run to the center, just a tad. All in all, a pretty cool little package, I think. Um, I want to now show you uh, a little bit of footage of the knife disassembled because what looks really, really good in the first 15 minutes or so of the outside of the knife, um, well, things turn a little bit when we get into the mechanics and the construction. So uh, take a look at this knife apart on the bench footage, and then we'll come back and wrap it up. Okay, guys, here is the Odino uh, completely disassembled. And I wanted to show you some of the things that you see when you get inside this knife that you wouldn't notice at first glance, because at first glance, it looks like an extremely well-finished knife. Uh, first of all, take a look at the edges of the lock bar. There you go. 
and that's even even a better shot where the lock bar is cut from that piece of 160 thousandths thick titanium just not very well finished I don't know if they water jet that or whether it's cut EDM or what but <clears throat> you know and you don't notice it when the knife's put together another thing would be uh, this hole in the backspacer just very sort of roughly finished around the edges right here between these two assembly sleeves and the top of the pivot just very rough and jagged and has a little flare in it just catches when you put the knife together But here was the really sort of troubling thing. Um, you guys can see that the, the sandwiched titanium backspacer is assembled over these locating sleeves. They're essentially tiny pivots uh, and then screwed in on each end. And it's a very tight fit. I can't really budge that backspacer and there's nothing holding it on. Um, <clears throat> and really it's not as much uh, oh there it goes it's not as much how tight the sleeves are in the backspacer as, as it is the the holes are sort of microscopically off location <clears throat> which presents a problem when we're putting the knife together uh, because it is so tight and then the other problem is that this scale where the lock bar uh, is has a bit of a warp in it which is something that I've seen rather commonly in Montiago, Montiago knives. Uh, my old Pull Force Mic 1 had a pretty severe warp and in fact it had a backspacer in this area. You couldn't draw that together. You could see light through it no matter <clears throat> how hard you cranked on the fasteners. I kind of wish I had seen that coming uh, on this knife because I didn't. I sort of got it uh, you know, I got it sort of dry fit together, and I knew I had some gaps, but I didn't really think ahead much. And I tried um, with the supplied body screws, which are <laughs> a size I cannot tell you, and I'll get into that when we come back to the <laughs> assembled knife. Um, but tried to use these little T6 stainless steel screws to draw the scales together and before it before the knife got remotely home um, one of the screw heads just twisted off and one of them I had obviously stressed almost to yield because a few days later I took it out of the uh, box to use it and uh, one of the screw heads was laying in there so I, had, I have two bad ones and I'll get to why that's a problem when we come back together but <clears throat> also, there was an inordinate amount of Loctite in this knife, blue Loctite, on all six body screws, and mostly the pivot was absolutely just drenched in Loctite. Um, in fact, it took me uh, <laughs> weeks before I could get the pivot apart, and then when I did, I found that, and you know, it's... It's a great feature, but you know this knife has hardened steel races for the ball bearings that sit into nice milled uh, grooves in the titanium. This knife had so much Loctite in it that this uh, <laughs> this race is permanently blue Loctited into the titanium. It was just drenched in Loctite. Um, so anyway, you know. Not a horribly constructed knife. There's no play in it when it's together. It's just a real bear um, to get apart and back together. And I don't think it's precision. I think it's more that stuff is warped and in a bind. So I uh, just kind of wanted you to see those things before uh, we get on to the rest of the video. But, you know, beautifully finished otherwise, isn't it? Just beautifully finished. All right, I'm going to put this back together, and we'll come back together and wrap it up. Okay, guys, I said it was uh, 
a knife from Italy by way of Utah on its way to the UK stranded in Indiana well the reason that is true is because this knife was actually belonged to my buddy Lee um, our Royal Marine Commando and uh, it stopped by to have me sharpen it and uh, send off to him after a clean and lube and well a funny thing happened I got the knife apart but it wasn't easy I had to sort of use my uh, <laughs> This is a neat little tool for tight knives. This is a tube of Finish Line Extreme Fluoro Grease. And the little ears on the side of the syringe make great little non-destructive pry bars for knife frames. Um, don't go at it with a screwdriver. Or you'll scar the heck out of it. Believe me, I know. So anyway, I struggled to get it apart. In fact, I punted. I, I had to actually write Lee and say, Lee, I can't get your knife apart. Um, the pivot will not budge and it's a, a round non D shaped pivot and I could get I, I could get uh, two Torx wrenches on it but I could not budge the threads it would just spin in the handle and uh, not good and then finally uh, a couple weeks later I did get it, but in the meantime, when I was trying to get it apart the first time, I had taken these six body screws out, three on each side, and I was having trouble with the pivot, but I thought I'll come back and get it later, and I'm prying and tweaking, I got, you know, the back to sort of crack loose and separate a little bit, and ended up not being able to get the pivot apart, but then I got daylight back here. And I squeezed it together and it didn't really want to go. And I put screws back in and yeah, you know, I, I was grabbing two or three threads and I thought, okay, well, we'll just draw it together with the threads and we'll be done. We'll ship it over there in one piece and we can worry about cleaning it later. Well, I'm turning, I'm turning, I'm turning, I'm turning, the screw's not getting tight and all of a sudden, poof, the head pops off. Yep. So actually as i said in the disassembly video two heads ended up being bad lee decided he didn't want it and i gave him a discount on some sharpening he just gave me the knife a couple weeks later though i don't know if uh i think maybe i oiled it a little bit i thought you know uh, since he gave me the knife it doesn't matter if i destroyed it. it was free i'm gonna try to get that pivot loose well lo and behold i got it loose got it apart and uh, I feel a little better about it now, but here's the problem. Uh, 172 screws are too small and too fine. 256 screws are too large and probably too coarse a thread. It's some metric thread, I don't know what. Uh, I did email Viper customer service and you know, told them the deal. Took the knife apart, tried to get it back together, wouldn't go back together, uh, ordered some screws, they're the wrong size, I have the bookends for the correct size, yours must be metric, could you please just tell me the size and I'll try to find some somewhere in this world. I got a long, you know, polite but frustrating customer service letter back from Luca at Viper Knives saying it is very bad idea to take our knives apart well, okay then why do you put them together with screws um, <laughs> and he told me they're very rare screws and they're not readily available in the US and I should get a hold of my retailer like Blade HQ has any right ain't gonna happen so I mean I wrote back and I haven't heard back from the second email I said Luca just tell me what size they are. I'll worry about finding them. So if you guys have any insight there, smaller than a 256, bigger than a 172, probably metric or some goofy European system screw. Here, by the way, is one of my screw heads. I don't know if you can see that real well. That's what was in the blue masking tape. So I've got a knife here with... Uh, four out of the six screws and I think I
tried to pick which ones were most important. I put the empty sleeve here. I don't know. Worst comes to worst, I'll drill them to size, put eighth inch pivots in, and uh, we'll have a all together knife. Now you guys would think, wouldn't you, <laughs> uh, that I wouldn't like a knife this fat for its blade length. I wouldn't like a knife that was this heavy for its blade length. Not a big fan of ball bearings. Don't like titanium locks that tend to develop stick. This does. It is totally dry and naked. Um, I had a little sharpie on it before I took it apart for this video and I thought ah, I'm going to try going back together without any. Um, and there's a little bit of stick. It might break in or I might put a little more sharpie or pencil on it or something. Not a big deal. But, you know, I don't love sticky locks. I don't love ball bearings. don't like heavy little knives. Um, but I really do like this. I mean I just I can walk around flicking that thing open with my middle finger all day long and I don't even care. That I'm too lame to open it with my thumb. It's stylish. You know, it's like a little Ferrari, isn't it? No, it's it, it's more of a tank than that. Let's say it's a Lamborghini. You know, early Lambos had big old medium-duty truck engines in them. <laughs> That's kind of what this knife is. It's got flaws. It's Italian. It's beautiful. It cuts, like, unbelievably well. It's got flaws. Who cares? We'll, we'll American it up with some English system hardware. It'd be fine. You should buy one. <laughs> By the way, it does come in carbon fiber full of holes. Watch one of those video. It's a pretty cool looking green G10. They weigh less. Pretty good job, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. Maybe learned something. Grace to you and peace, my friends. From God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. And remember the word and my viper Odino are sharp.